Hi everyone, Mary at Espresso Press Design. Welcome, thank you for stopping by. Today we're going to do some ephemera embellishments. And I guess I'm going to call these, um, I've been calling them vignettes. And they're made with um, images and wax paper. And my setup is all different today because I'm going to be pulling over my Sizzix. So I'm going to have to keep checking to make sure I'm in frame here. But uh, we'll get started in a minute. Uh, first of all, some housekeeping. The Etsy kit. Uh, I think I called it vintage footwear is finally finished um, the full kit which will be on Shopify probably won't be finished for another week but this is 15 pages I'm not sure if that made the cut I can't remember <laughs> but um, This is pretty much it. There's another writing page in here somewhere. I hope. Maybe not. Well, it's not in here, but it's in the kit. There's a few writing pages. I don't know where they are. Maybe they're, they're probably still over on my desk. My whole life is in turmoil today, but that's another subject. So today, um, as with everything practically, um, things come about from experiments, at least when it comes to my crafting. And um, this virtually came about when I was um, working with some wax paper and I wanted to um, strengthen some bags so I was wondering if I could glue to wax paper because here's a little wax paper bag it's not coming apart as far as the glue but they um, if you use them a lot, they don't stand up. So I was just wondering how I could um, strengthen. I love wax paper. I love working with wax paper. I was just wondering how I could strengthen up wax paper and if I could glue to it. And you can. So I came up with these little uh, ephemera. And I know you're not going to see this on camera because the glue is on top and they are, um, maybe you can see a slight bit of gloss there, but they're lovely. I mean, they're just, um, <clears throat> what they remind me of is, um, paintings in my grandmother's house. I, I don't know if I'd go so far to say beveled glass, but they look extremely vintage. <laughs> so I had a bunch of uh, floral leftovers from Valentine's, mostly vintage Valentine's. Some of them have been sitting in my pile for a couple of years. So those are what I grabbed to begin this adventure. And it worked pretty well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, let me just get my ones out here that I wrote what type of glue. This 
so that I don't lose track of that because I did want to um, I did take some time experimenting with different adhesives and um, I want to wanted to make sure that you know what you could use so what you'll need you'll need your images of course you'll need some wax paper you'll need some these are on packaging material they're very sturdy um, you could layer up your package material and they will get like pretty much like a piece of wood you could make ornaments all kinds of things <clears throat> so you'll need packaging material wax paper adhesive I'll get to that in a moment um, I die cut mine whether that's really 100% necessary no it probably isn't uh, I did not bring my pens over my oil-based pens what I rimmed the edges with did not bring those over not going to do that part you've seen me do that before and uh, a brayer is helpful you might be able to do it do this with just a brayer I use my Sizzix because I like to fuse and I'm going to explain what I mean by fuse in a moment so I'm going to save the glue discussion because there's a point at which we're going to have to wait until our first step is dry before we do our second step so that's the point at which I'm going to discuss the glue I already have two glued on here and I'm going to show you how and this will be for the second step applying the wax paper and then when we wait for that to dry to the point where I can put it through the machine that's when I'll discuss the glue so I'm using Old Faithful here um, Old Faithful for me is Linico neutral pH adhesive it's a book binding glue I'm almost 100% certain it's equivalent to glitter glue it dries extremely fast it stays flexible and uh, that's primarily the reason I chose this glue and I've been with it now for at least a couple of years and it's um, less expensive than glitter glue or barely arts and it sticks to everything so far that I've tried it with so I'm going to get a couple of images here that I'm going to show you. Um, I think I want that one. And might as well do that one. I'm going to show you <coughs> um, about applying the glow. Trim these down a little bit. I'm going really fast. I'm trying to go really fast. I know I'm not going to get that whole image anyway, so might as well just chop it off. Okay. The glue, I use my finger, 
some of them I used a brush just well just one but what I want to do is get this glue as thin as possible oh and one thing I forgot what I did forget and I meant to do that for sure is bring down a piece of sandpaper and rough up this packaging a bigger piece of sandpaper let me see if I can spread this thin enough to get both images probably not maybe let's see that would be helpful to um, rough up your packaging if it's glossy okay keep a cloth handy because you're going to be wiping your fingers a lot whoops 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 I didn't want a wrinkle I don't usually get a wrinkle I never got a wrinkle but today I got a wrinkle okay this is where your brayer comes in a little helpful okay that's step one Step one, basically you're applying this as if you were decoupaging because that's pretty much what it is. And when I get to the glue, that's where I modeled my um, glue suggestions on. That's step one. You're going to want to let that dry completely. And that's why a thin coat comes in handy. And uh, it's also going to help avoid a major epic fail. Okay, so moving on to step two. Can let that dry. Step two is the same. Get these out of the way a second. So I am using the glue that I felt worked the best, but others also worked. And I'm going to do the same thing. try to get it as thin as possible keeping in mind how fast this glue dries and that's the most difficult part actually it's getting enough on there and racing against the clock And hoping everything isn't sliding around on your table because I don't have my glass mat. And I hope I have enough, it's not drying too fast. And that's the point where you're going to apply your wax paper. already tell I got a point where it's not going to stick but that's okay I'm 
try to just apply a little more. What I don't want is a puddle because when it comes to the time to put this through the Sizzix, it's going to apply so much pressure that your paper might tear and everything might slide off the packaging like a pancake on a hot griddle and you're going to end up with a congealed mess at the end of your at the end of your press and you don't want that so that's why you don't want a puddle and that's why you don't want to glue with too much water and that gets to my next point I surely thought my next serendipitous mistake that actually turned into something else quite beautiful that you might want to try and that was um, I thought for sure that Elmer's glue would work because I watch decoupage artists and they use Elmer's glue 50-50 Elmer's glue and water to apply images to glass and it works so I was extremely surprised that Elmer's glue did not work but it turned into another beautiful mistake which I'm going to show you here in a moment okay so at this point second step to avoid having the pancake disaster I made sure that These were like 95% dry. 100% you might not get any effect from pressing it. But too wet, you might run the risk of sliding, like I said. See that probably, what probably happened there is my glue dried too fast and uh, there. okay so I'm just gonna let these set for a moment and hope I get the right usually I can tell I mean with different glues you can tell it's it'll be slightly cool it'll be very cool to slightly cool so the glues that I used that worked but I personally don't think any worked as well as um, the adhesive I'm using Tacky glue worked, but it's very hard to get a thin spread with tacky glue. And there's a little area here where I'm not so sure it won't come up. Um, okay, my second choice was acrylic medium that worked but I think it affected the image slightly although I'm not sure it could have just been me pressing too hard 
or it's uh, wrinkles in the wax paper. I'm not sure, but that worked. Um, then I went on to Mod Podge. <clears throat> My first Mod Podge was an epic fail. I got the pancake effect, and then I realized I had way too thick of a coat, so I went and did it with a brush. Quite a very thin coat each layer and it worked and then I went on to try matte Mod Podge and applied it with a brush and it also worked which I was very surprised the Mod Podge didn't work because I think that's also used for decoupage Okay, step two is probably optional, but I usually do it anyway. And this is what I call um, fusing. I do this a lot with, um, now see, I put a lot of um, glue on that corner and I'm getting some wrinkling of the wax paper. But that's okay. I'll press it out. That's something else that will happen with wax paper. So I call this fusing. I do it a lot with um, collage, postcards, uh, tiles, mini master boards. I did it with the ephemera. Let's mass make ephemera because um, when you're when you're going to be cutting that kind of stuff up, it's a pain in the butt to um, keep having to reapply glue for places you missed. So I put my Sizzix through a lot of work. So step two, I press it, and naturally I'm going to press it again when I die cut it. And this is another reason why I have these, um, I'm using my crappy plates, and I have that in another sandwich because I don't want I cleaned my plates. Because you don't want a big blob of glue squirting out the end. And you're going to want to remove this from the paper immediately. So you can see, I know you're not going to tell, but that's, that's pressed very well. Okay? I don't think it's going anywhere. But disclaimer. Disclaimer, because this is wax paper, something I've never done. I do think this is a sellable item. Whoops, I might have bumped the camera. But I am going to let these sit around for a while just to make sure Nothing separates. So that's that's something you might want to check. And you might want to do yourself. Um, I do believe the ones the ones I have are over a week and I see no signs of them separating. Um, okay, there's, there's step two. So, since I don't have any, I'm just going to wait one second. Let those dry completely before I die cut. And talk about uh, serendipitous discovery which actually gave me some very other beautiful effects. Okay, when I tried the Elmer's glue, 
you're not going to see this either but there is either a layer of glue on top there or some of the wax pressed off I can't be sure but that does not feel like paper and it brings an amazing beautiful heightens the color of your image and brings forth clarity. Let me just show you the difference here. There's the difference between the two. So you can tell that. And that was just, here's my cutouts. That was just a matter of the Elmer's glue not working. I ran it through the die cut. I saw it wasn't going to work. I peeled this wax paper off the image and that's what I had left. And it was so beautiful. I kept it. So that might be something you might just want to, you might want to try. Um, and that was basic, basically, I'm sure all you could do is put your image there, spread your Elmer's glue as thin as you can. I made sure I waited until it was 100% dry. The Elmer's glue took the longest. Spread out your Elmer's glue, wait for it to dry. And spread out your Elmer's until the um, image is completely covered. Wait for it to dry and then just peel off your wax paper and you'll get that effect. So I'm, I'm definitely going to do that again too. If I just want like something on a cover or something and I just want a little protection, I'm going to do that too. Okay, let's bring back the big guy and hope we're at the point where we can cut without a mess. This is, a, this is the difficult part because normally I would be waiting longer before I did this part. But I want you to see everything. And these plates, I'm using my crappy plates. I got new plates, but no way am I, no way am I, um, and I'm just putting that over the top because I don't want this, um, I don't want this, what's the word, <laughs> texture transferring onto my wax paper. And then here's the other thing. If you want to do those to make ornaments, how many... I might have to put something, another shim in there to get that to cut through. How many um, layers you put on there to do the presses. You can add layers after you do the presses. If you think you're going to be forcing your machine, don't force your machine. You can get that to an ornament thickness just by um, gluing the same shape together. It depended on the... I don't know why. I, I pretty much use the same packaging material and everything each time. Sometimes I got a good cut the first time, sometimes I didn't. Don't ask me why. Okay. I see a bubble. That's probably not a good thing, but I see a bubble. So I missed a spot. You don't want to miss a spot. 
Um, it could be it's just not dry yet and I see white. I'm not sure. But because of this wax, when you go to do your oil-based metallic pan, it goes over there as smooth as butter and you get a really nice edge. So it's just it's just beautiful. So that's the other thing about the decoupage. I truly do not understand why Elmer's glue did not work, but I would have to I would have to consult an adhesive expert and a decoupage expert. <laughs> And, uh, or go study decoupage a little better to try to figure out that conundrum. Because theoretically, Elmer's glue should have worked. I don't know why it didn't. Okay. And I don't have enough room here, so I'm going to be going backwards. Yeah, see I got lift. I got lift and my either my glue dried too fast that's not good and I can tell it's not good either I missed a spot or my glue dried too fast or it's just not dry yet let me run it through again so of course when I did this on my own I took more time to make sure each step was where it should be and I worked out all my errors and everything and got to the point where I could feel it and I knew when it was too wet or too dry well it pressed I don't know if that's going to go anywhere or not I don't think so but it pressed I no longer see the bubble Maybe there was enough glue trapped in there that I got good adhesion. So, okay, that's what I did. And that's what I discovered. Let me get this monster out of the way. And, um, yeah, I'm going to be... I have a bunch... <laughs> Well, now I have to do these for sure. Can't wait to see those pansies. Um, and this, I pretty much just threw it away. Unless I could fit two, two little dies on there. So yeah, I have a bunch of... A bunch of Im images I have left to do. And of course you could do any type of image. You could try this on paper for your little postcards. Um, things like that. Your little um, vintage woman. Um, you know, things like that. Would look absolutely stunning. Um, any of your black and white. Type images. I just chose florals because that's what I, that's the um, scraps that I wanted to discard or get, you know, they've been sitting around forever. I love that little square one. Love that. I mean, anything. 
truthfully, I do not think they're going anywhere. But they're very sturdy. And um, I'm sure you could poke a hole in there too. Make some little charms, bookmarks, um, all kinds of stuff. The sky's the, I, well, not the sky, but your imagination is the limit. So I hope, um, I hope that is explanatory enough. And if there wasn't, anything explanatory enough just let me know and I'll be happy to um, answer your questions but basically it's just a matter of doing it yourself and learning at which step to put it through the machine so you don't make it a disaster you know and don't use glue too much glue or glue that's too wet um but you know as, as you know it's wax it's not porous so you're going to have to um pay attention to what type of glue you use i do have one more option that might have worked and that's my jewel and glue I know this will work with plastic. I did not try it. So, okay, everyone, I don't want this to take forever, but it's important to go through every step that I did and to help you to try to get the results that I did. So, okay, thanks for your time. I'll see you next time. Bye.